Now for the next cuts. These are going to be trickier. Um, you can see here's a bottom wing. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six ribs. So I've got six nose ribs per wing. So that's a dozen across the bottom. And you can see this wing is straight. So I just made those six cuts. And the cut is square to the nose rib. Then I'll have six more, or I'll have cuts on the top and the bottom of each rib, but a shallower cut. And those will be straight cuts as well because, again, this wing is square. It's not swept. Here's the trick the upper wings are swept six degrees. So, I could probably get away with making straight cuts, but it kind of would make me feel like I was doing a hack job. So I'm going to try to cut the, now the, the upper wing you can see has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ribs. It's a wider ring than the wing, than the bottom wing. So I'm going to try to make these cuts at a six degree angle. And I'll need to make the notches on the top and the bottom. Uh, cut those at an angle as well. Here you can see the side view of the nose rib. So this won't go straight through, this will go at an angle. And this cut, 1 16th of an inch, also half inch, that'll be at an angle. This one will be at an angle. And eight of those nose ribs will have 1 6 degree angle on all those cuts. The opposite wing will have a 6 degree angle in the opposite direction. So those will be trickier cuts. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do it, but that's the job to tackle next. Actually, I may, I may make those smaller cuts first in the nose ribs for the bottom wings. But those are my next tasks. So I tilted the blade. I took off the dado set, put the regular blade back on my table saw, tilted the head, or the the cutter, the blade, over to six degrees. And that's easy with this wheel here. Just set that on six degrees. And I found some scrap and just ran that in a little ways. And now I've got a couple slices that I've cut at six degrees. I'll chop those off. I will put one of them along the face and one along the back and that way I'll have this will be tilted over but I'll have a flat surface in the front that I can clamp to so I'll clamp up between two of those pieces or clamp my jig and those two angled pieces that I'll cut here I'll have one and two. It'll be between those and I'll clamp the whole thing against the uh, miter attachment and this should be leaning this way or this way if I want. And I'll cut eight ribs at this with this lean, eight with that lean. And that's the idea anyway. We'll see if it works. There we go. Now I've got a flat clamping surface here and uh, this is It leans in a little bit, but it's it's close to flat. Um, I've already got screw holes in my template that are square to the template. So off drilling a hole that's at a slightly different angle than the one that's in there already, I'm not sure how secure that would be. So at least at first, I'm going to try just using a clamp and seeing if that holds it firmly. So this will give me six degrees in one direction. And then I'll just flip these blocks around and it'll tilt six degrees in the other direction. Um, but I'll need to um, take a, sh uh, a shallow cut initially and make several passes to work my way up to the correct depth of cut. And I'll, I'll show you how that goes, or show you maybe when I reach the final result what my thinking is on the, how to set that depth of cut or what the depth of cut should be. So, we're about ready to go. 
So this is the idea. Obviously this would be the left wing because it's swept to the rear and that's approximately the angle that it'll be swept relative to a line here that would be perpendicular to the fuselage. So that angle in the nose fits perfectly in those guys. And you can see just like with the other grooves I'll need to shave a little bit off here to round this over. I'll just use a hand plane for that. And that's it. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Very cool. Now I'll change the angle of my jig, flip those little pieces around, and cut the other eight for the right hand wing. Alright, I'm done with my nose slotting jig, my nose rib slotting jig. I'll set that aside and probably never use it again. Um, probably use the MDF for scrap for other things. Now comes a part that's a little trickier. I've got a pile of these that are cut with one angle here and a pile that are cut with the opposite angle. So now it's important to make sure that this pile gets the correct angle cut here and here for those smaller slots for the aluminum angle. And the other one gets the correct angle. The other pile gets the opposite angle. Um, one of the tricks will be cutting this one at the right angle, then I'll flip the jig over to cut this one, and I'll need to make sure that that's going at the same angle that this one is. And both of those then will be opposite on the other pile as far as how the jig is set up. So I need to be very, very careful about that so I don't ruin these nose ribs. Yeah, I probably wouldn't really ruin them. I could use them, but again, I'm trying to do the best I can do. So I need to get them correct, so I need to be very, very careful. So that's next, and uh, for that I'll hook my jig up, and then I'll just turn this to to use the correct angle here. So that's the six degree mark there, or over on this side, six degrees. So next phase of the nose rib. Work. So to make the jig to cut out this notch and that notch, I'm just going to cut out some 3 quarter inch MDF. I'm going to line up this notch along one straight edge and I'm going to create another straight edge normal to this point on this curve right here. So I will just grab a ruler and place it normal to this notch make sure this one's still lined up maybe bring that down just a hair I think that's pretty good. Eh, a little more. I rotated it this way just a little bit. Alright, so now I'm going to move this. Actually, yeah, I'm going to scoot that out of the way. And. right there. And now I just need to cut this wood out. I've got a straight edge here. I'll have this straight edge for the other thing. Then I'll just whack it off over here. And then I'll put some doodads on here to hold the workpiece in place. And then I can 
attach this to um, the miter attachment on the table saw, run pieces through and cut this. Then I can flip the jig over so that this edge is resting on the table of the table saw, clamp it to the miter attachment, run the pieces through and cut those. I think this will work. We'll see. There are a variety of ways to cut a line. One of them is to clamp a straight edge to your workpiece and then you can use a circular saw or a jigsaw um, or you can use a fence with a band saw. This piece is too wide to fit in there um, or a fence on a table saw except this edge and this edge aren't parallel so you can't use a fence. Um, but a straight edge is a good way to do it and a good jigsaw can cut a really make a really nice cut so that's what we're gonna try and I just made sure that the straight edge is parallel to the line and I think the alignment is good when I hold the the jigsaw up to the fence the blade looks like it's gonna cut where I want so let's give it a shot And with this jigsaw, you can adjust the motion of the blade. If you want a really aggressive cut, you can have it oscillate like this, or you can have it just move straight up and down for a less aggressive cut. And I want a smoother cut here. There, there's no oscillation in, in three different settings of how aggressive the oscillation is. So. Turn that off altogether to get the smoothest cut. Good. I'm in a good spot here. And what's cool about this, as long as this is parallel to this, it doesn't matter exactly if I get the blade a little bit too far to the left or too far to the right because I can just take the workpiece, scoot it over this way or over this way to get it to fit perfectly between my two lines wherever I want it to fit. So. despite the fact that this is a very aggressive blade. It's a really nice smooth edge. Let's look at the piece, the work piece here. And yeah, this I think this is gonna work great. I'm lined up here, and then I just slide it over this way far enough to where it lines up with this other edge. And then what I'll do is just tack little pieces of scrap wood on different places to hold the work pieces in place. Clamp this guy to the miter attachment on the table saw. Lower the dado head so I get a shallower cut. And then I can cut each one of these in turn. I'll set it up to cut one of them and then I'll cut all dozen... Uh, is, it, is it a dozen? Three, six, eight, nine, ten... Uh, yeah, twelve. 12 ribs for the lower wing. I'll cut all 12 this notch, then I'll set it up to cut this and then cut all 12 of those. So here's my jig. So I need to cut one notch here. And these are a sixteenth of an inch deep, half inch wide, just like the, the front there, but shallow. And another one needs to be cut there. So I'll just put this on the table saw, 
um, clamp it to the miter gauge and run it through the dado head to cut that and then I can flip it around after I get all of them cut and cut this one clamp it again to the miter fence and run them through to cut that the only adjustment will need to be I need to get it lined up with the blade and that'll be it and let me pop this out so you can see what I did. I just I lined the piece up so that where I needed to cut here was flush with the edge and where I needed to cut here was flush with this edge. Held that in place and just nailed the different pieces in here to hold it firmly in place. And it is pretty firm, which is good. Again, I just used some quarter inch scrap. And it's a nice snug fit. So I think this will work great. And this actually will be much easier than cutting, than making the nose cut at a six degree angle. Because the miter fence actually turns. And it's even got degrees marked on it, so I can just loosen that, swing it over to six degrees, tighten it down, and then run all the pieces through for one upper wing and uh, then do it the other way and run them through for the other wing um, and some of you may have been wondering if I can clamp this actually the way the the table saw is set up now I can clamp this to the miter fence but then when I flip it over how do I clamp this into the miter fence there's not really extra material to grab onto well there's two miter slots on the table saw. One here and one there. And I'll just swap this over there to the other side so I use that miter fence so I can clamp onto there. That's the idea anyway. I think that'll work fine. So I just made some test cuts in this piece of wood and I used one of my gussets which is 1 16th inch plywood and I just held it up next to the cut until it was flush. And as soon as it, I got a nice flush cut with this gusset, I knew I've got a sixteenth of an inch. You could also use, you know, calipers or a ruler. I think would be challenging, but maybe you could do it. But the gusset, I think, is a nice, easy way to to check to make sure you've got the correct depth of cut here. Pretty flush. Good enough, I think. 